Hey everyone, it's Mason with Barbell Black Belt, and today we are going to be discussing and demonstrating a few hand techniques that I've learned over the years. I'm going to roll up my sleeves for this. So when most people need to hit someone, they usually resort to the fist, punching someone in the face, or maybe the open hand, give them a good old slap. <laughs> but in the vast ocean that is martial arts, you have plenty more options than just those. If you are new to my channel, you might not know that I am a practitioner of Taekwondo. I'm a first degree black belt, and I'm currently training for my second degree black belt. In Taekwondo tests, there is usually a breaking section where boards or bricks are broken with the hands and feet. For my first degree black belt, I did some cool ones. But for my second degree, I really wanna show that my training has paid off. So first of all, we will go through all the hand techniques that I've learned in Taekwondo formally by an instructor, and then we will move on to some of the other hand techniques that I have not been formally taught. Most of the crazy ones come from either Goju Ryu Karate or Shotokan Karate, but we will get to those in a little bit. For now, I will show you all the ones that I've been taught. Starting off with the simple ones, we have the basic punch, hitting with the first two knuckles here. Then we have the palm heel strike, which is taking the open hand like this, curling the fingers in, bringing in the thumb, and then hitting with the meaty part of the palm here. Next we have the knife hand. This is sometimes referred to as the judo chop, but it is simply taking the hand up here, bringing it around, chopping maybe the neck, could be really anything, and hitting with the meaty part of the hand here. On the opposite side of the knife hand, we have the ridge hand, which is instead of taking the hand this way, you flip it around, this way, hitting with this section of the hand here as well as a little bit of the thumb. Next is the back fist. Now this can either be done hitting with the flat part of the fist here, or you can tilt the hand so that the knuckles connect first. So here or here. Really just depends on the style and what target you're going for. Similar to the back fist, we have the hammer fist, which instead of hitting with the back of the hand here, tilt the hand over and hit with this. The hammer fist can come from a downward motion or from the side. Now we get into some weird ones that I've been taught. This is the tiger mouth. The idea of this strike is that you're going right into the neck here and striking the windpipe inwards. Boom. Some practitioners like to grab once they've made contact and then pull, but I feel like most of the time in Taekwondo, it's just a quick boom. This strike can be seen all the time in movies. After the tiger mouth, we have the tiger claw, which is coming forwards into the face like this, and just kind of taking the fingers and raking them down across the face. Finally, we have the spear hand, and this can be done in a multitude of ways. The two ways that I was taught was to either have the hand bring the fingers all the way together and simply strike like this. Keep in mind that this does make the middle finger strike first, so it's really just like the middle finger is being supported by the rest of the fingers, and that's the only striking surface is right here. The other method of doing a spear hand is to bring these three fingers together. What I mean by that is bending them here so that the striking surface is on the same line. I don't like this because I feel like this usually bends when I make contact, but granted, I have not practiced this strike enough against an actual surface in order to give any kind of say. That's gonna change today. <laughs> but it's really up to the practitioner's interpretation.
Now, to some of the strikes that I've not been formally taught, but I've seen online or in other areas. First off, we have the fist again, but instead of striking with these two knuckles, you strike with these two or these three. This is more of a Wing Chun technique, punching upwards with a vertical fist. After that, we have the panther paw, or panther's fist, as I've sometimes heard it called. That is simply taking the hand like this, curling the fingers in similar to how I did with my palm heel strike, but this time striking with the front knuckles here. It's gonna take some practice. The next couple of strikes I don't really have names for, so I'm just gonna describe them as they are shown. This one I remember distinctly learning in middle school of all places. Just where you take a normal fist and extend the middle finger knuckle. I think in karate this is reinforced with the thumb here, but I've also seen it just normal like this. I'm not quite sure, so let's try it out. <laughs> oh, why am I doing this to myself? Ah. 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 Oh, I got my index finger on that one. I feel like Sikorsky from Baki. Next is the same principle as the middle finger strike. We have the first knuckle strike. This is gonna hurt. I know I'm probably doing some of these outside of the intended purpose of their use, but I'm really just playing around with what's possible. What I mean by that is that some of these strikes are very useful against some areas and very not useful against other areas. This is probably an example of an area where this is useful, whereas this is not as much. I need more practice. Okay, this is a weird one. Similar to a palm heel, striking here, except you take the thumb knuckle as the first striking surface. I believe that's what this is. Yeah, he's hitting with his knuckle, like that. Ow, I'm gonna try it. All right, let's try this one. Oh. Ow, maybe I shouldn't just start going full on. This one will take some getting used to. Okay, now we have one that makes a little bit more sense. Striking with the back of the wrist. I've seen people kind of flow this this way, almost like, it's like a jellyfish. These little thing is jellyfish. From now on, this is known as the jellyfish strike. You have to go back and then forwards. I feel like a kung fu practitioner. Oh. Okay, this this one I love <laughs> because I was always taught never to do this because if you miss, you're gonna break your fingers. But if you train your fingers, maybe you won't break them. I don't know. But it's the Three Stooges strike. <laughs> Taking the two fingers right into the eye sockets. This one can be seen on Baki, and I'm sure a lot of other anime. Ah, see, I miss. If you're going for the eyes, and they just barely lower their head, and you hit right here on the eyebrow, and you haven't trained this very much, your fingers are broken. Even if you have trained this a lot, I'm sure it's very easy to break fingers doing something like this. 
It's like, what if you get this move, you fully commit to it, and you jam your fingers in someone's eye sockets, and then they move really fast and you break your fingers inside them? I don't know, I've never tried it. This is not a move that I would want to do to someone. Ugh. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, Curly. Another one that I've seen that doesn't make any sense to me at all is similar to the Three Stooges strike, the One Finger Strike. I feel like we'd take an insane amount of training to get your one finger to be able to pierce something. Maybe an eyeball if you're very precise. I don't know. Let's try it. I don't even want to try this one. Yeah, that's, that's hard. That's difficult. The last one I can think of, I'm going to call the beak strike, because that's what it makes me think of. It's where you take all your fingers together and pinch one tiny spot, and that is the spot that you strike with. I don't know if there's a specific order in which your fingers should go, if your thumb needs to go in a specific spot. Maybe there, that feels good. Calling it the beak strike because these look like birds. Anyway, let's try it. All right, last one. So many little ways you can manipulate your hands in order to hit someone or to hurt them really badly. To condition yourself to the point where you can use these effectively in a fight, that takes years upon years of practice. Not only just getting your fists and hands strong enough to use, but to actually be able to apply the hardness of your bones against a person. You can have the hardest fingers in the world, but if you haven't practiced against an actual resisting opponent, it's unlikely that these will ever work in a fight for you. And I'm sure I'm missing a ton of techniques here. If there's any that you know of that I'm missing, please let me know in the comments down below. Or if you know the names of these techniques that I'm getting completely wrong, please type it in the comments below. <laughs> And finally, if there's any of these strikes that you would like to see me perform in my second degree black belt test, please let me know in the comments down below. Okay, that's enough of me telling you what to put in the comments. This has been a fun little exploration into the martial arts, but just know that we are only scratching the surface here. There's plenty more that we can get into when it comes to this kind of thing. But that's all I have for you today. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all next time.